I wanted to take us to the difference between uh, descriptive and normative questions about our practice of rational inquiry, particularly our reasoning practices. It's very easy to see how within the project of epistemology naturalized, we would be concerned with the question, how do people actually reason? How do people actually arrive at judgments? And we know what kind of inquiry this would be. We know what kind of evidence uh, would be involved. And when we have um, some data about our actual reasoning practice, we also know that we could perhaps give an evolutionary explanation of why uh, we go in for that kind of practice. It's because the people who didn't go in for that kind of practice didn't get to have any babies. But there's another kind of question, which is how ought we to reason? And in fact, uh, these come apart quite sharply. We can certainly imagine that um, when we do the investigation of our actual reasoning practice, we come up with answers where we want to say, you see, our actual reasoning practice is that we tend to make mistakes in this kind of area. And indeed, there might even be an evolutionary explanation as to why um, it's no bad thing to make a mistake in that kind of area. One a popular example, it doesn't concern reasoning, but it's another kind of judgment. It might just be um, adaptive to underestimate the distance from you to a predator, for example makes you run all the harder, which means that not only do you escape, but you build up very firm thigh muscles. Now, the question for you is this. What kind of argument, what kind of um, um, argument or evidence could be relevant, not to the question how we do reason, but the question how we should reason? Uh, good, good. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, certainly there, uh, there is serious reasoning that goes on that is fallacious. I think of the gambler's fallacy. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and uh, uh, again, of course, uh, uh, there's wishful thinking. Uh, and uh, uh, so our recognizing these as fallacies uh, is a matter of scientific progress. Uh, we've observed, we've observed the failures, that's one way, uh, just empirically find those that this, this, uh, uh, this is a bad, uh, a, a bad line to take. Uh, uh, what we uh, uh, actually do is uh, try to break the uh, uh, break t uh, break down the considerations logically and uh, 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 in the face of uh, what seems to be a reasonable sort of uh, so, so to speak primitive statistical theory, uh, see why uh, uh, certain things uh, certain ways of reasoning should uh, uh, succeed as they do, uh, and we don't see why. Uh, in the case of uh, the gambler's fallacy, uh, why a, uh, uh, a bad run of luck should be followed by a, a, a good turn any, uh, of luck any uh, more than uh, uh, otherwise. And uh, so, so, so that's where uh, uh, in engineering, uh, uh, sci scientific engineering comes in, the engineering of the scientific process. Let me just get this clear. It might be, um, I suppose, that it turns out the people who engage in the gambler's fallacy um, have a happy life and um, have more children than other people. Supposing that uh, that were so, that would, uh, that would no more make um, the gambler's fallacy correct reasoning than uh, that we indeed take it to be. It would still be a fallacy. It would be a fallacy measured against some norms. Now, the account of norms, as I understand it, is being uh, given in terms of um, engineering principles. So I wonder if, it, if you could just say a little bit more about that. Uh, yes, good, uh, uh, because I, I think that if, if this happened, uh, we would be changing our norms. Uh, and the, uh, I think the, the, the norms here are like the norms in, uh, uh, in, in uh, building bridges. Uh, uh, and they're, they're learned uh, partly by trial and error, partly by uh, uh, scientific theories, reasoning, uh, systematic reasoning on the basis of uh, hypotheses which in bundles have been uh, more or less uh, uh, checked by experiment. In, in short, I think that, uh, that, that norms uh, of an of a, uh, a epistemological kind uh, are uh, applied of uh, cognitive judgments, just as the norms in engineering of, of, of bridges is, are. Right. Let me just make sure I've got, gotten this part right. Um, the idea is that if um, a certain pattern of reasoning which we currently take as fallacious uh, were to turn out to lead to uh, people having happier lives and more babies, then um, the norms would change and 
it would no longer be correct to describe that reasoning as fallacious. Is that the view? Uh, yes, I think that's, uh, that's, what, that's what I would say. Uh, it, uh, uh, since it's such an unexpected uh, turn of affairs, it might take us a while to be persuaded of it. Right. right. And then uh, certainly we wouldn't be satisfied until we'd gone on and worked out uh, in a more or less partly logical way, in a way, uh, why that was. I'm puzzled about how it turns out that, um, that norms in the area of behavior, ethical norms, um, are treated in your philosophy in such a different way from norms in the area of epistemology. Uh, in the case of ethics, you're, you s said that normative claims weren't a part of, um, couldn't be part of a naturalistic inquiry because um, there wasn't any way of verifying them. Um, in effect, I suppose what it comes to is acknowledging the gulf between ought and is. There isn't any way for a statement about what ought to be done to have observable consequences. I think that's right. Now, I think they're different. I think now, they're different. Why isn't the same thing true for statements about how we ought to think? I think, I think the uh, difference is this, that uh, uh, norms uh, as, uh, uh, concerning how we ought to think are like the uh, norms of uh, uh, building uh, dependable bridges, uh, namely, uh, that they're, uh, they're norms that are derivative from uh, uh, declarative uh, statements, findings, uh, uh, established, uh, uh, so we think, uh, uh, sufficiently established uh, scientific uh, hypotheses, laws, uh, about the b behavior of these materials. Uh, uh, in the case of the uh, uh, ethical norms, uh, I think there are no corresponding uh, cognitive judgments. Uh, there, uh, there, are for, uh, there, there are for some of the, for the subsidiary ethical norms, yes, uh, but those are cognitive judgments that uh, relate the consequences of some action uh, uh, to the consequences of another action, which is uh, 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 which is governed, ruled out, or or approved by uh, irreducibly uh, ethical norm, so that uh, so it's the, it's the relation to subsidiary cognitive judgments that seems to me to make the difference. Take a, uh, an epistemological norm such as um, assume that the future will resemble the past, a principle we were talking about earlier. Um, what cognitive judgments is that related to? Uh, well, now th this is uh, uh, th this is a you might say a, a cognitive judgment that has been sustained by uh, induction. Uh, in this case, it's an induction on inductions. Uh, uh, we've had this uh, long experience of uh, uh, having things. Uh, uh, turn out pretty much the way they turned out before. Uh, therefore, we expect them to do so again. This is the uh, this is almost the same as the old fallacious uh, effort to justify induction. Uh, well, it doesn't justify induction, uh, but uh, uh, I think it explains the judgment. Mm. 